Hello. In today's reflection, I'm going to be talking about amazing grace. It's very unusual at the moment being in church and not being able to sing. But one of the really good things about it is that we get to listen to someone singing and then we can pay more attention to what they're actually saying. So we get the chance to uh, listen to the very familiar words and to the, to the detail of what we're singing. Last week um, in church, we were listening to Amazing Grace. Incredible words. I'm sure you would agree. So I'm going to read them for us now. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. It was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils and snares, we have already come. It was grace hath brought us safe thus far, and grace will lead us home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we'll have no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind, but now I see. This hymn, as most of you will probably know, was written by a man called John Newton. And some of you may also know a bit about the history. And you may have seen the film about William Wilberforce, an, an anti-slave campaigner, which shows him meeting with John Newton. Newton was born in 1725 in London. His mother died when he was only seven. And his father was quite a stern sea captain. And at the age of 11, which you can imagine is just starting secondary school, his father took him to sea. After many voyages and a reckless youth of drinking, Newton was impressed into the British Navy. And after attempting to desert, he received eight dozen lashes. My goodness, I don't know how he survived that. And he was reduced to the rank of a common seaman. Newton served on a slave ship called Pegasus. He didn't get along with the crew and they left him in West Africa. Now Newton's father sent someone to find him and bring him home. And during that voyage home, the ship was caught in a terrible storm off the coast of Ireland and it almost sank. Newton prayed to God and the cargo miraculously shifted to fill a hole in the ship's hull and the vessel drifted to safety. Newton took this as a sign from the Almighty and marked it as his conversion to Christianity. But like many of us, he didn't radically change his ways all at once. His total reformation happened more gradually. Later in his life, he wrote, I cannot consider myself to have been a believer in the full sense of the word until a considerable time afterwards. He did begin reading his Bible at this point and began to view his captives with more uh, compassion and sympathy. Newton, though, continued to sell his fellow human beings, making three voyages as the captain on two different vessels. He suffered a stroke in 1754 and he retired, but he continued to invest in the business. And in 1764, he was ordained as an Anglican priest and wrote 280 hymns to accompany his services. He wrote the words for Amazing Grace in 1772. Finally, in 1788, 34 years after leaving, he renounced his former slaving profession by publishing a blazing pamphlet called Thoughts Upon the Slave Trade. The tract described the horrendous conditions on the ship and Newton apologised for making a public statement so many years after participating in the trade. It will always be a subject of humiliating reflection to me that I was once an active instrument in a business at which my heart now shudders. The pamphlet was so popular, it was re reprinted several times and sent to every member of Parliament. Under the leadership of the MP William Wilberforce, the English civil government outlawed slavery in Great Britain in 1807, and Newton lived to see this, dying in December of the same year. So God heard Newton's cry and saved him and used him to influence government. In Ephesians 2 verses 4 to 5 it says this, But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ, 
even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you've been saved. We are saved by God's grace and through his grace, if we are willing, he can use us in his plans and his purposes. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord, that you hear our cry when we call on your name. Thank you that you saved John Newton and used him in your purposes and plans to end slavery. Father, forgive us when we enslave others. Help us to value all human life. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening.